I want my kites to be all one color instead of the four separate colors that they show in the pattern. I have in Brilliance open and the hoop that I'm using right now, if I click up here in the properties, it's the 360 by 200 for the multi-needle and it's for the PES format. If you have in Brilliance, you can change your hoop by just clicking on this icon right here, the drop down arrow, and you would choose the hoops that are pre-populated for your home embroidery machine. It works with them all. And if your hoop is not there, you can click on new and create a new one. But uh, this is the one I want to use, so I'm going to click Apply and OK. And I'm just going to pull in the kite. So I'm going to go to my folder down here, and I have the Kimberbell kite. And if you look over here in this list, you can see there are design files for every home embroidery machine as well. Now you can see this right here as an icon. Let me go to large so you can see it. Because I have a brilliant thumbnailer also installed on my system. And I've told it to recognize these two design types. So I'm just going to grab this one by putting my mouse cursor over it and holding down my left mouse button, and I'm just going to drag it right onto the screen for Embrilliance. So when I click on the design, I can see what I have here is a placement line that's highlighted in red for the edge of the topper, and then it goes through all of the objects that make up the kite. So I can tell this is the placement line for those two triangles and the tack down placement line tack down. There is the tail. There is the satin stitching for the cross members of the kite. And there is the final outline stitching. I'm going to let this stitch and then I'm going to put my fabric down. Then I'm going to stitch this, going to stitch this, going to stitch this. And I want to do that because these stitch lines also provide the underlay for that final satin stitch as well. And I'm just not going to cut out any triangles with the scan and cut. I'm just going to put my fabric down after this first one and let the other ones do their thing and let it finish stitching. So this is going to be really simple for me to do. So to move the design over to the machine, if you don't have wireless capabilities, you want to put in a USB drive. And I'm just going to grab it and drag it over to the USB drive. And see, it says copy to USB. And that's that simple, and I can just take the USB over to the multi-needle. I'm over here at the multi-needle, and I have the design on a USB, so I'm going to touch the universal symbol for USB, that little trident, and there it is right there. I don't have to do anything with this at all except tell it what spool to use. So I'm going to tell it that is the design I want, so I'm going to set the design by touching set. So I really don't have to do anything with this at all. I'm just going to hit edit end. And the only thing I do need to tell it is what thread color to use. So I'm going to touch these three spools right here. And I want it to use spool number three. I want blue stitching all over this thing. So for number one, which is this placement line right here, I'm going to touch spool number three. And then for spool number, I'm sorry, for stitch number two, which are these first two sets of triangles, before it stitches that, I want it to stop. So I'm going to touch the hand. I'm going to take the hoop out. I'm going to float the topper on the stabilizer, and then I'm going to put the hoop back in, and then it's going to stitch those first two triangles. After it stitches those first two triangles, before it makes this stitch, I want it to stop so that I can put my fabric down. And that fabric is actually going to cover the entire kite area. So I'm going to go ahead and let it stitch spool number three, which is blue. Number four, don't pay attention to these colors. I've got spool number three on the back of the machine is blue. I want that to be number three. And I'm going to do this number three. And 
after this last tack down stitch, before I get to the tail, after this last tack down stitch is finished, when I get to the tail, I want it to stop. And that's when I'm going to take my scissors and trim all around the outside of the diamond shape of the kite. Then it's going to stitch the tail in spool number three and the cross members in spool number three and the final satin stitch in spool number three. So that's exactly what I want it to do. I've programmed in to use blue for every stitch and when to stop so I can put my topper on and float it and then I can place my fabric and then trim it when it's ready. One of the things I have done on this is I have ironed SF-101 to the back of the entire project. I had a couple of scraps and I just ironed it to the back to give those satin stitches something to grab onto and not cause a lot of puckering. So the SF-101, that's a Pellon product called Shape Flex 101. I'll put a link to it below. And you would want this on the back of any of your quilting cottons where you're going to be embroidering a satin stitch. So we're ready to go. I'm just going to um, tell it okay. And I'm going to jump into embroidery mode now. And it's ready to go. I'm going to hit lock. My button turned green. And it's going to give me the placement line to float the topper. stop and it did so I'm going to remove the hoop and I'm going to put the top I'm going to I'm going to rotate the design next time so the topper hangs off the front instead of the back y'all I need my topper to hang off the front of this I didn't do that right let me show you how I'm going to fix that I'm going to return cancel embroidering okay I'm going to go into rotate and I want to rotate it 90 degrees like that. So now that line is going to go like this and my topper will hang off the front of the machine. I'm going to tell it okay. I want to confirm my stitches with blue and all of my hand stops. That's all good. Um, that needs to be spool three. What was I thinking? Okay. That's all good. I'm going to uh, start it from the beginning again and the only stitching that has already happened is on the stabilizer and that doesn't matter so I'm gonna jump into embroidery okay and I'm gonna do it again hit lock and go I'm gonna put some KK2000 on the stabilizer just to hold it in place. I'm going to place this right in those lines. They make this so easy. And to float it, I'm just going to take some pins and I'm going to pin where I know it's not going to stitch. There. That looks great. Okay, I'm going to put this back in the machine. You cannot mess this up, you guys, because they give you that placement line. So handy. And I'm just going to touch lock and go. So this is the first two triangles. I'm going to take some more KK2000 and just put it on the fabric piece. Just a little bit. And I just want to make sure I cover this tip down here and this point up here. I cut a four and a half by six and a half inch piece of fabric. And that should be plenty. All right, now it's going to do its thing until it stops for me to go ahead and cut off the excess around the outside of the kite.
always want to cut your fabric off with a firm surface underneath or you might uh, pop it out of your hoop. You never know. Okay, and I'm just gonna let it go. It's gonna take nine more minutes. finished. I'm going to touch OK. That turned out real cute. I like it. I almost wish the tail was a little bit thicker on the line, maybe a satin like this, but it's fine. I don't have to do anything now to the machine at all. I'm just going to pop the project out, put in some new stabilizer, and then stitch the other three. I do have to go in to the threads and change the thread color, but I'm not going to change the hand stops at all. This multi-needle is so easy. I love it. Okay, so I'll get back to you when I'm all finished. So I guess I messed something up. This was supposed to have yellow stitching all around, and I guess I forgot to, I skipped over one of the numbers when I was changing the thread. So I'm going to take this off and let me show you how to get rid of stitches. This is a Designs and Machine Embroidery uh, Stitch Ripper. I love this thing. I've had several of these different kinds of these things. This is the best on the market. I'll tell you, it's, it's a little bit more expensive than the other ones and it is worth every penny because time is money, right? So to get rid of stitches when you have a mistake, I mean, they, they turned out beautiful, but I didn't pay attention. So I want to get rid of all of the green. Don't take your project out of the hoop. You want to leave it just as it is. It's not ruined, okay? And you want to turn it over, and you always want to do the removal from the back. Never do it from the front. You don't want to risk. This will put a hole in your fabric if you're not careful. So it has two different speeds low and high and I'm just going to take it and just kind of drag it through the back of the center of the bobbin threads. So all I'm doing is just dragging it through the center of the bobbin threads. Barely putting any pressure on it. You don't have to scrub because you don't want to put a hole in your stabilizer. I can feel when those threads are, uh, the bobbin thread's been cut. And then I'm just, I've got it kind of flat and I'm just kind of scrubbing like this flat. There, that looks good. See how easy this was? Y'all, this would take forever with a seam ripper. I love this little um, this little bitty part right here, it just is, lets you get precise. I'll put a link to this below, you guys. You, This is one of those things you don't need it until you need it. And this is real time. I'm not speeding this up. I use this on the long arm, too. When I stitch something I don't want, I can just get right up under there in between the layers and it just pulls them right out. Okay, so I've gotten rid of all of the bobbin threads. Now you can take a pin and you can just run it under those satin stitches and they'll come right up. And they come, you can just pull them straight out like that. Look at that. And it's like serve pro. Like it never even happened. <laughs> so in less than five minutes, I can have all of that cleaned up. I love this dime stitch ripper.
They came out with this. I'd first seen it at the show in Houston. I snatched it right up. Okay, I got all of that green thread out of that kite. You can see there, I got all of it out of the tail, the zigzag that was up here and all that. There's a little bit of sh green shading. And I don't want to pick too much because I might pick the wrong thing. But, yeah, I got a little bit of it more there. So, anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and stitch that one part again all the way around. As long as you don't remove it from the hoop, you should be fine. So, let's see how it does. So, I'm glad it's pinned in so it's still lined up like it's supposed to be. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to hit the needle plus minus button. And I'm going to go up one on the arrow. And that goes back to the start of that kite shape. So if I back up another one, see, it'll go backwards. Now it's at the cross members on the kite. So I was on the very last stitch, and it did its thing. Look at that. I put it... I. I didn't change that last one. So I need to change the color of this. I'm gonna go, okay. I'm gonna hit return. Cancel embroidering, okay. It's put itself back to zero, all right? Now I need to go into the thread change and I need to go down to the last one and make it 10, tell it okay, and tell it embroidery. All right, now I'm going to go into needle plus minus, and I'm going to go, so this is the first one, and you can see the preview of the placement line. I'm going to go back one. There I am right there. So I'm all ready to start this now at the kite final satin stitching. I'm going to tell it okay, and lock, and go. And it's doing it in yellow like it's supposed to. And it looks like it's catching the fabric just fine. That looks great. Okay. It's got another four minutes. I've got all of my kites uh, applique on. Man, that looks adorable. Okay, I need to put together my side borders now. So on the side borders, you're going to take two of piece I. It doesn't matter which two. Color coordinate as you want. And so, I need my little pin. I need a pencil, that's fine. Let me mark this through here. Okay. Make my landing strip so I can tell where to sew. All right, that's better. So what I'm doing is, is I'm putting the pin in exactly on the point there. And then on the back, I'm just drawing a line to the pin a little bit before it and a little bit after it. And that is going to help me line up exactly where to sew, because I'm sewing from the back. Otherwise, I'm sewing blind on the distance. Okay, yeah, this will be fine. Right here, I want to put that seam right at that point. Okay, I'm going to pin it. And if I did it right, my seam will be right at the point. That'll work. And that's what it should look like if you got it right. Perfect. Very happy with that. Okay, and then on the other two borders, once you get the center sewn together, you want to sew on two corner stones. So you need to figure out your colors, how you want them to be. 
You want to start in the middle on your pinning. I'm missing a block somewhere. Start in the middle and then once you got that one done, then you want to nest these two. Then you can pin in the middles so that the edges stay even as you stitch. That method of start in the middle, do the seams, and then do the centers actually works in favor of ease on the fabrics. And it helps your feed dogs to do their job. Y'all, there's something to be said for ease, I'll tell you. Once you learn how that works on your sewing machine, it is usually a, a good friend. <laughs> Once you figure out how that's how your fabrics are going to behave. Well, it's acting like it all fit perfect. Let's see. Okay, that worked out well. That worked out pretty well. <laughs> that one worked out great. Okay, this is good. I like it. I like it. I like it. And now for the last one. Okay, let's see. Oh, that turned out perfect. I love it. Y'all, that looks so good. All right, I'm going to iron it. I am going to put some batting in between the backing and the top, and then we'll get it bound and be done. I have laid my topper right on top of the batting and trimmed the batting exactly to size. I didn't go into any kind of fancy measurements or anything. I just trimmed it, laid it on top and trimmed it. So I will make sure that it fits just like it's supposed to. Let me... All right. There's some things on here I would have done a little differently, like not having these two blues right across from each other, but pff, <laughs> I'm good with it. So I need to get a, my backing ready. I'm gonna use a plain black for my backing. This thing is 22 by 22. I need a 24 inch piece of black because I need an extra inch on both sides. Right now, this is just a rough cut. Let me go about an inch and a half. All right, I'm gonna go iron my backing. All right, now that my backing has been ironed, it's nice and smooth on the back, I am gonna take my ruler now and trim exactly one inch away from the outside of the edge of the topper. I'm going to fold up the edge of the backing fabric into uh, in half and then I'm going to fold it over again as a self binding. I'm going to do two sides opposite each other first and then the other two sides and we'll get nice mitered corners. I'm going to use a cardboard template that's cut at a 45 degree angle. It's just a piece of cardboard that I got from a shipping package that came in and I cut it using my ruler to make a 45 degree angle. going to be using steam -a seam to kind of glue it all together and it works great all right I use one quarter inch steam -a seam this is what I use to put my self bindings on works great and the first thing I do is just fold up 
half an inch the outer edge until it meets the edge of the topper and press. And now I'm going to put my steam seam to not on the edge out here but starting where the fabric does I'm going to put it right on the edge of the binding. I know it's black and it's kind of hard to see right on the outer edge of the binding. I don't know if I'm going to get to where I stitch this down with the sewing machine so I'm just going to use this right now. Pull off the paper and then just press this up right on it. Now I use steam. If your topper is a little wonky this is where you can kind of maneuver the binding just a little bit and use it as an optical illusion to make it look like your topper is square. This is my favorite way to do binding on these little projects like this. Oh, too far. Okay, now to make the mitered corners, I'm going to go ahead and fold this up just like I was before so it has an idea folding it up to the edge of the topper so it has an idea of where I want it to go. So here on the corner, it's kind of hard to tell. I'll put the 45 down just a little bit. So here the 45 is right even with the colored fabric, okay, right even with the green. If I push it down like a quarter of an inch or so, then I can fold this corner over, fold that corner over just to, to the 45, okay. Now when I, ow. <laughs> Now when I fold this up, I put the 45 on here and fold this up, I should get a nice 45 degree angle. You kind of have to play with it. It's not an exact science, but you're going to have to fiddle with it until you get it to where you like it. I like that. So I don't have the glue on there yet. I'm just kind of ironing it so I can tell it where I want it to go. Do the same thing over here. You don't want to fold your 45 degree angle up right next to the, on this, on these, right up next to the topper because it won't work out right. Okay. All right. Now that they know where they need to go, now I can put my steam -a seam on there. Oh my goodness, that looks great. Y'all, these little cardboard templates are the best thing. They make life so nice when you're doing this process. Let me show you these corners. Can you see that? Look how good that looks. That looks awesome. They all look awesome. It's a piece of cardboard from a Blink security camera box. That's all it is. It just makes all the difference in the world. You wouldn't think so. All right, it's done. Yay! I'm going to put it up on the board and we'll talk to it. <laughs> All right, so I have finished the March topper. I think this turned out just adorable. So let's talk about a few things with it that I did not put on camera. I did go ahead and stitch in the ditch along the outside of the inner border and I jumped over where the satin stitching crossed over that, um, that outer line. I also 
stitched in the ditch on the inside of the outer border all the way around. And then I also did on the binding, I'm going to get up super close and hold it real still, see if you can see it. I did a blanket stitch on the binding. So that's it. I didn't do any other quilting with it, mostly because I had quilted these triangles using clear blue tiles to give it a background swirly. I don't have any additional quilting in here in the middle, and that's fine. It, it looks okay. I think it's kind of cute. It'll go on my table every March or hang up on my wall or something, and I think it's just adorable. So I had a good time making this. In this one, I did use the designs that were on the CD that come with, they are a companion CD for the uh, table topper book. If you are doing the kites, using Simply Applique instead of using the designs on the CD. I recommend that if you go ahead and scan in the page that's got the kite on it, and you do inside outside on the scan and cut for it to recognize the, the inside here and the outside here of the satin stitching. You're not gonna be able to do the different colors in the, in the, in the diamond shape. You, you're probably gonna have to go with a solid color, mostly because when the camera picks up the shape, you actually would need to go into, in Simply Applique software and create a line and draw it from here to here and here to here, if you can do that. Okay, I'm not showing how to do that. You can do that in order for that to come up as satin stitching as well. Also, which I do like, if you do this in Simply Applique, your little stitch here for the tail, see how you can barely see that green stitching for the tail? In Simply Applique, this comes up as a beautiful satin stitch, and it comes out really, really nice. But you're gonna have a tough time doing this and then getting all of those um, placement line tacked down and getting all that to fit and whatnot, it's just going to be a lot easier if you do a solid color kite. You also might want to consider for your, it also might be easier once all these things get stitched is to do exactly like I do did and allow it to stitch everything down and then take your scissors and trim that around. It's, it's a little bit more involved when you have inside separate pieces for this particular design. Believe it or not, for as simple as it is, I fiddled around with that in the software for quite some time and just said, you know what, I think I'm gonna use the designs on the CD. <laughs> because while I could do it and get it done and it'd be no problem to actually have to show you and explain it and go through the whys and the wherefores, it was gonna get really, really confusing. So it's completely up to you guys how much you wanna play with it. It's fun if you can get it to work. It's, it's totally up to you. So this was a lot of fun. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it, uh, stitching it along with me. And please post your finishes on Facebook in our Facebook group, Power Tools with Thread Facebook group. And we will see you next month for April's, okay? We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something, bye.